are you talking about? Oh, the plate is like this big. You got the bad What's up, people? We're back. How was your vacation, <laughs> Sarah? I was on vacation. Went to San Diego. Visited some friends who moved. Sadly, they moved about a year ago. Mm -hmm. Did you same. build some sandcastles? I did not build some sandcastles. <laughs> it's too um, bad. We did beach Missed it. Missed opportunity. I, it is. You know what? I saw people yeah, building sand, sandcastles, and I wanted to build some sandcastles. Mm -hmm. um, but the collective group wasn't so much into it. Okay. So. Okay. All right. More. They were more into, like, the surfing, which I'm – I have a phobia of the ocean. Okay. So, like, I just kind of get into my knees, and that's – so a sandcastle yeah. is more, like, my speed. Um, I get it. <laughs> the ocean is both fascinating and frightening, frightening. at the same time. I'm not really into oh, any animals right. that can eat me. So yeah. sharks, bears, tigers, lions, alligators, right? Just kind of stay away from all of them. Okay. I, all right. You know. General, that's your tip of the day. She did play softball at one point. Like, <laughs> so there is a slight element of risk. It's just no wild animals. No so. wild animals. <laughs> okay. Um, okay. But we rented a boat one day on vacation, went to the San Diego Zoo. I'm okay. fine with the animals, you know, like behind the glass, mm -hmm. plexiglass. or Controlled environment. Yeah, that's fine. <laughs> <laughs> so it was good. Good vacation. Just highly recommend San Diego. Although there are wildfires out there yeah, right now, so be I know. careful. Stop literally. doing. Stop setting the world on fire with your gender reveal parties. Wow, she they, said it. Like while we were there, yeah, there was a it. wildfire that got started because of a gender reveal party. Like we could see the plume from San Diego. I'm not saying stop doing the parties. Just stop setting things on fire with the parties. That's all I'm saying. That's not. That's not too big of a request, is it? I mean, just the the level that they went to right? for that. Like, stop setting things yeah. on fire. For an Instagram you know, put, post? Put, put like, a layer of, uh, you know, blue icing in a cake and cut it open or something. Yeah. Like, don't, don't set off a bomb. Um, wow. Anyway. Wow. How was your – how are you doing? I'm doing – I'm doing good. You know, um, just – I think the most exciting thing, and we'll talk about it today, is uh, September 1st came and went, mm -hmm. and there are a number of 22 commits that have announced their verbal commitments. And um, they're still, I mean, it's such a weird time, right? Uh, especially, I feel, for a lot of the, the West Coast kids who really haven't been able to play out a normal summer uh, like they typically do. And um, both the coaches and players trying to navigate the space and make good decisions uh, based on what's happened this year. So it's interesting. I mean, there are some really good kids that came off the board, uh, but there's a lot of good ones that I think it's going to take a little bit more time for them. Because right now, as you know, uh, there's no – official um trips going on right across the country so it makes it really difficult for a player to kind of get that usual experience of okay here are my top five schools i'm going to go to these schools to take an official visit and that's just like not happening and obviously we know football season has been delayed and in some conferences delayed until 2021 right. so it's just this constantly moving target and um, I'm excited for some of the the players that have verbally committed, even though there's some that you know may or may not agree. That's up to the players' discretion. Yeah, we're gonna we're gonna dig into that. But first, we're gonna kind of talk about something that was probably impacting player um, com commits, um, budgets, and what's happening to some of wow. these programs. Um, we have you have two, four, six, eight, ten different articles kind of linked here of different schools in the NCAA with furloughs and and layoffs and budget cuts. Um, I think we can kind of dig into some of the highlights, but it's um, it's grim. It's uh, we kind of it's starting to get scary. Yep. And, um, you know, I think when we started talking about this in the beginning and it in terms of we could see this being really the pandemic being a huge blow to a number of uh, schools across the country. Um, and it's just beginning 
um, in my mind. Obviously, if you haven't heard, um, uh, UC Riverside's athletic department is kind of in discussion on whether to eliminate athletics, which would be so devastating to that community. Not to mention that's that was the last college that I coached at. Right. And, um, but the reality is, Athletics is very expensive, mm-hmm. very expensive. When you have a number of kids on scholarship, um, the housing, um, the equipment, the uniforms, the facilities, facility care, like the list goes on and on. And I think that's just uh, one of the many things these athletic departments are facing. And they have to make real decisions. And I, I you, and no... No chancellor, no AD wants to do this, but we're seeing uh, schools like Utah, um, UNC, Nebraska, just Power Five schools announcing that there will be furloughs. Mm -hmm. And I'm glad they're not completely just like eliminating those positions because there are some schools that are eliminating those positions. But it's just kind of, it's it's scary. And with the NCAA also uh, making furloughs, like what does that mean uh, for the future of collegiate sports? And uh, go ahead. No, I think, I think the UC Riverside story was the most, um, the, the grimmest, right? It, you know, considering cutting all sports programs, like that's, that is a heavy blow like you said, to the community, to, to athletes, to the college itself. Um, you know, the boosters are, you know, ex, the ex-athletes and the boosters are saying, no, like, don't, 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 don't do this. Like, but, you know, it's, it's in, it, they're hard decisions. You know, UT, you t- talked about UC Riverside being the, the last place that you coached. UT is obviously your alma mater. Um, they're making um, budget cuts uh, upwards of $13 million um in terms in the form of um layoffs and furloughs um so yeah it's not it's not just these these smaller schools it's it's texas it's nebraska it's like you said it's in utah it's these power five you know well-funded programs that are having to make serious cuts to their budget let alone ali you know you mentioned the ncaa with march madness how much how much did they lose uh canceling that last year yeah, they lost one billion in revenue. So I mean, that's a lot like of that's, money. That's um, billion with a B, folks. Like, yeah, that's that's serious yeah. money um, for the yeah. NCAA. So it's um, it's heartbreaking, right? It is it is? And the thing is, is like, once Ma- March Madness was canceled, I mean, it was basically a domino effect of all mm-hmm. the things that were going to happen. Um, and the fact that we're kind of like still in the same place that we were some months ago is just like, it's terrible. It's terrible for the colleges. It's terrible for those communities. It's terrible for the athletes that are trying to be recruited. And I think the every single school across the country is trying to balance their budget. And unfortunately, like it's going to come down to making really difficult decisions. Um, And we already know that some salaries have, have been cut. Uh, We saw that with Clemson. Um, But this is like, I think the bright side, I think everybody in the athletic department is like on board. We get it. We need to shrink up our budget to make, this thing go Mm -hmm. and that's the reality of the situation and i'm really curious to see what happens as we saw uh college football uh being played last weekend we have another big weekend coming up um how important is that uh in into like boosting the the economies for those those institutions because i know i think texas is at going to be at 25 percent capacity um, which is like, I mean, it seems really small when you look at the stadium itself. Um, but hopefully as we get to understand how to, um, kind of implement these new protocols and allowing people back in, 
uh, to some of these huge facilities that are multi-million dollar facilities, mm -hmm. like can we see a little bump um, in in revenue for some of those schools? I hope so. Like it's so important. Like if we don't have football for many of these Power Five schools, it's it doesn't look good on the balance sheet. No, I mean Penn State, you know, which you know. Not necessarily. It's a you know it's a power five school. It's football, but it's not like Alabama or any of these any you know championship level football programs right now. But you know they without fo without football they they they're looking at upwards of a hundred million dollar revenue shortfall, um, which is <sighs> substantial, right? Like that's how many programs is that, right? Yeah. Uh, that's a lot of that's a lot of money. So you know, universities are doing what they can. I think I think I read Nebraska's. Uh, furloughing 51 employees and uh, athletics department's employees and everybody else is getting a 10% pay cut. Yeah. Right? Like, that's serious. Like, uh, mm -hmm. I think you mentioned, was it Utah is going to furlough? Yeah. What was uh, it? Everybody in the athletic department at some point during the year. Right. So if you're not in season, you're going to be getting furloughed, right? Like, that's, that is serious. And nobody wants to be making these, right? Like, I think, I think, uh, I think the UT athletic director said, like, this is heartbreaking but necessary, right? Yeah. Like, um, so that's, that's it's, it's pretty standard across the board. Um, you know, UT, Clemson, Penn State, Nebraska, uh, Utah. Uh, I, I can't imagine. I'm sure we're just going to see more and more stories come out. Oh, yeah, 100%. Um, um, but... I think what we can do um, if you're around any of those programs is to find out ways you can help support them, whether it's like through donations. Um, just I know UC Riverside is uh, they've created a petition, which uh, I'll put a link to that petition uh, so you can help um, keep UC Riverside athletics alive um, and, and well in the community, because I know that would be devastating. Uh, to so many student athletes. I'm also curious to see, you know, how long it takes to bounce back, especially with these budget cuts that are happening. I mean, obviously, I can think it's probably it's going to take years, right? Um, so, yeah, I think calling out the donation part, I think, is, is huge. Chez, um, obviously, trying to help out as much as you can, because um, I know donations would come in super helpful. But, yeah, it's it's scary. <laughs> Yeah, we've heard coaches and ads say this is going to this is going to be years uh, to recover, right? And if you think of losing one March Madness is a billion dollars in revenue the next year that you're you're missing, um, that that compounds pretty quickly. Uh, um, so it, it's catastrophic. Gonna, yeah, it is. It is catastrophic for it's potentially um, the nail in the coffin for something like UC Riverside. Um, and it's catastrophic even at the, you know, one of the richest universities in the country, uh, athletic programs in UT. Like, um, so, yeah, it's, it's going to be years for sure to recover. Um, but anyway, you know, like Chess said, any way that you can help out, the petition would be great for UC Riverside. Mm -hmm. um, and, uh, you know, safely I mean, the supporting. other thing is, like, how important is it that um, the Big 12 and SEC kind of get off the ground this month? And then how important I think I think programs are already probably looking forward to twenty twenty one as like we've got to get basketball going. Mm. Yeah, I, but they've I mean, got to do it safely yeah. too. Yeah. Like that's the thing. Mm. Um there are some athletes who started the, you know, we want to play position and I'm sure there are some athletes who don't want to play and they they don't feel safe, right? Yeah. Um and they have to weigh the legal repercussions if an athlete gets sick. Uh, critically sick, um, and uh, and then they have to weigh the balance of losing potentially losing a hundred million dollars in revenue, right? Like that, those are not easy decisions um, on either side of that coin, right? Um, so, where are we on a vaccine? <laughs> <laughs> uh, or can it just go away? Right? Um, yeah, I think everyone is waiting for that. Right. I, I guess this is going to test our patience a little bit longer. Yeah. Um, yeah. um, but uh, let's let's move on to some brighter news. Obviously, we, we talked a little bit about um, September 1st was an exciting and stressful day uh, for, for many uh, young athletes across the country. And we saw Arizona and Texas and Ole Miss and Tennessee, uh, Cal, uh, pick up some great 
great recruits. And uh, what was the what was a what was like a no brainer? Uh, you knew that that recruit was going to go there. Um, I think Leanne Good going to Texas was was a a sure bet, and um, I love the Reese Atwood pickup for them. I think she's a catcher who has tons of upside, uh, great behind the plate, and she catches uh, one of the best pitchers in the country right now, Ava Brown. And uh, a kind of sleeper that they picked up, uh, Sit Lolly Gutierrez, uh, which I think a lot of people don't know about um, right now, but she's definitely going to be a pitcher to watch. I think Tennessee went in and, and picked up maybe one of the hardest throwing pitchers in the country yeah. and one of the top pitching prospects, no doubt. Carlin Pickens uh, from South Carolina. Um, she's had a ton of buzz around her. Obviously, she's she fits the profile of a power pitcher uh, topping out at 70, 71. Um, they picked up another high-profile high recruit in Taylor Pinnell from uh, Fisher Mojo, one of the top um, 60 new teams. From the summer, um, any surprises? Any, I, any head scratches? You know what? I really, I really liked um, Cal's pickups. I think they picked up um, Dewana Johnson from All American Sports Academy, who was originally an Oregon recruit. Yep. And uh, she just kind of reminds me of a DJ Sanders type player, but she also pitches, but she hits bombs. You think I that like had DJ. anything to do with a uh, coaching change? Uh, maybe. Yeah, maybe. I think, you you know, uh, Chelsea did recruit uh, Deanna, so I I can see how that was probably, the conversation is probably easy. Yeah. And, and they picked up Tiana Bell um, from the Lady Magic, who um, had verbaled um, early on to Washington, but uh, changed up and is going to Cal. So I think it's great for a couple of reasons. You get kids to stay around the Bay Area and, and grow Cal softball, which we know was a championship program yep. with a, a former alumni, now head coach, and Chelsea Spencer. I think great moves, like keep recruiting the top kids out of those areas. I think it's so important to, to build that pipeline and to build that trust in the, in the relationship with those top clubs. Did you see? Did 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 you see fewer? Were you expecting more or fewer uh, verbals given the the COVID atmosphere right now? You know, I kind of went into it not knowing what to expect. I knew there was going to be some kids that came off the board pretty quickly. Look, the reality is, is that some of the relationships that were built with some of these players and coaches has has been something that's been established like years ago. They've been going to their camps every year maybe multiple times during the year so they've gotten to know these coaches it's just from march on they didn't really have that interaction but those relationships were there prior to it um you know i'm not going to shame any kid in, into thinking that you know they're making the right or wrong decision it's a it's a crazy time people are you, Could know, you imagine like going through this process right now oh my gosh i'd be stressed out it's a stressful and crazy process, so as it is. But now, like, you throw a pandemic and, like, what's going on with budgets and, you know, yeah. maybe, maybe 16, 17, 18 year olds aren't I thinking mean, about that. I mean, how important has Zoom been during this period? <laughs> right? Because, yeah. like, the kids can talk face-to-face -face with the coaches. They can get a – also FaceTime. Um, they can get a tour um, around campus – um, through any of those kind of video chat features. I, it's it's definitely a difficult time. I feel for the kids. I mean, some of them are probably like, just get this over with, which is like, you know, probably not the best way to make uh, a decision on where you're going to spend the next four years of your softball career. Um, but if you feel like you got a good connection uh, with the coaches and you feel like you know them well, mm -hmm. And you feel like this is a good fit, maybe even like get to know who the recruits that are going to be going there and the current players, like just try to inform yourself um, as much as possible. I don't know. I think, I think if it were me, I'd be 
probably more patient. Mm-hmm. Yeah, just because I mean, it's it just you know, it's it's how people handle the unknown and and ambiguous situations, and uh, um, yeah, I, like I said, it, it's hard to it's hard to say you know it's right or wrong choice right now because. I, there might not be one, right? Yeah, uh, I d- I'm not going to, that's why I'm saying I'm not going to pass any judgment mm-mm. on I, it. I think, I think coaches th- are trying to figure out how to navigate this. Players are trying to figure out how to navigate this. Recruit Recruiting services are trying, like everybody's trying to figure out how to navigate this. And I don't think anybody has the right answer here. Mm-hmm. So I will say this 2022 class, the talent in Texas is amazing. Yeah. Who's, who's, who do you like? I mean, Leanne Good, who I just talked about. I mean, Avery Hodge is absolute stud. She's going to Oklahoma. Mm-hmm. Of course, you? you'd love that. Boomer. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. uh, you've got Kennedy Powell from the Hot Shots, like arguably uh, the best third baseman um, in the country. She's going to UCLA, which you don't see a ton right. of, of kids from Texas going uh, to UCLA. So that says something. Um I love that dark horse that you mentioned from like West Texas, uh, who is going to Texas. What was her name again? Uh, Sit um, Lolly. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. Gutierrez. Yeah. Look at you yeah. throwing the dark horse out, Allie. Mm-hmm. No, we got to get we got to get you the dark horse. Anyway. Yeah. <laughs> Sound effect. Tyler, where's our dark horse? Mm-hmm. Where are you on that? <laughs> I mean, producer will get on it. You got to really credit the fantastic club organizations throughout Texas. Mm-hmm. I mean, you've got the Bombers, you've got Texas Glory, you've got Impact Gold, you've got Hot Shots. Um, you can throw the Dirt Divas in there. I mean, some really competitive, oh, uh, the competitive teams um, up and down the age groups. So I think they, I, they're just super talented. I think you're, I mean, it's not going to surprise you guys when you see a number of uh, Texas names in the Hot 100 coming out in a couple uh, weeks. Really leaning hard into the hometown Texas folk. I, I just think they're really good. They're really good. And Chez is completely unbiased in her. Uh, she's <laughs> professional. Come on, I'm, she's, a West, I'm a West Coast kid. She's keeping I, this. There's I, that's plenty of good West Coast players. Um, they're, li- they're built a little bit differently. Um <laughs> But they're they're good. A lot of good players in this class. Mostly medals, I would say. It's very medal heavy, heavy in terms of talent. That's what I'm saying. You're keeping it professional, objective. If you're touting all this Texas talent, like you know, it's for real. Yeah. Um, cause I mean, this West Coast kid here. Any, do you have any predictions on um, which school is going to have like the the best recruiting class of 2022s? Ooh, you're putting her on the spot, Allie. Wow. I like yeah. it. No, going for it. I, I do like Arizona's pickups. Um, they picked up two big players on, on Lady Magic that have been watched by every top program in the country. Um, I mean, I'd still like to see what Carlin Pickens does in, in big games. She has the tools uh, to be one of the, the top pitchers in the country. I mean, I like Texas picks. I'm, I mean, I'm oh, clearly biased. I'm, clear, I'm clearly Shocking. biased. Hey, <laughs> Ellie, you would appreciate this. I do love um, some of the pickups that A and M just had. They just picked up a West Coast kid, uh, Kyle oh, Altmaier, um, one of the top players on uh, Firecrackers. Brashear, um, highly sought after, great player. Um, uh, I'm blanking on the name right now, but you're allowed to miss one name. You haven't okay, missed one all, all show. I'm, b- I'm okay, very impressed. Ke- Keely, Williams. Keely Williams. I, I think Keely okay. Williams is like one of the best outfielders in the country. Oh, I remember you mentioned her name before. Yeah, yeah. she's a stud. So she's Allie, stud. you can you can gig them. You can throw your horns up, and I'll yeah. just boom her. No, I think you should be really excited <laughs> yeah. about uh, the future of A and M softball. And they they picked up. Uh, Probably the best power hitter in the state. Nice. Maybe, maybe the my country. Eggs. We'll see. Look at that you smile know. on Allie's face. She's yeah. so excited. I'm not excited. <laughs> I know. Huge pickups. And, um, yeah, those are, those are um, some of my favorites. I'm trying to think. Um, I like – Baylor picked up a really good catcher. Actually, mm. two really good catchers um, from, the, uh, from the Bombers and Hot Shots. So, yeah. It uh, should be interesting. Right. There's still some top 
uh, recruits on the board. Um, so we'll see. Who's the top one? Who's the top uncommitted person right now? Uncommitted? Yeah, like still on the board. I mean, I feel like there's there's maybe there's one player on my mind in my mind uh, that I think is still trying to decide. Um, so she's technically still on the board, but okay. she's committed to a different school. Okay. All right, we'll keep that one on the rest. Yeah, yeah. I'll keep, it, <laughs> keep that. Keep you guys that don't get to hear rest. about that one. Um, but there's a lot of there's a lot of good ones, and um, hopefully um, get to interview some of these athletes after they've made their verbal commitments and yeah. kind of get the backstory. And speaking of, you know, top talent, we we got uh, we got rankings. Yep. Coming. Yep. So in a couple of weeks, we'll start the 2022 um, Hot 100 r- rankings and. I know you've been patient, uh, but it's, these things take a lot of time, and I want to make sure that uh, we do these athletes justice and do tons and tons and tons of research on these players um, because this is like this is a huge class. And then uh, we'll do the 2021 rankings uh, leading up to um, NLI, which I mean they could sign their NLIs now, but it's kind of one of the weird things that happened uh, during the pandemic. And uh, yeah, that's, that's where what, we're at. That's what we got, folks. Mm-hmm. So stay tuned. Um, we'll see you next week. That's the deal.